huge, great lineup of speakers here today to tell you about NFT, metaverse, and all the perspectives in it. But first, you are welcome here to the kitchen. The kitchen is a part of Aarhus University where we work with the startups. It's uh, student startups and it's startups coming out of the research here from the Aarhus University. This is uh, an open house uh, that you can come and use. And then if you are related to Aarhus University and have a startup idea, come on, let's see if we can make a business. So, welcome. We have uh, chips down here, we have uh, sodas and beers, um, and a mobile uh, pay number if, uh, if you need something to drink. The toilets are a bit weird though, here in the, ki the kitchen right now, but those out there, they should work. I hope we won't get a too long lineup that are the only toilets in the house working right now. Um, long story. But now I would like to welcome Sid and Brenda here who have made this incredible program and looking so much forward to these couple of hours. Thank you. Um, so we're not freelance artists, we, we're interested in the space, we're exploring what happens in the metaverse, what's happening with play, what's happening with learning, and especially with like identity, and creation, and ownership. Um, so we're just exploring all the different trends that are there, and the funny thing is, maybe this is the weirdest week to be having events like this, like crypto is crashing, NFTs are crashing, um, the world is ending, there's war happening everywhere. Um, essentially, a lot of projects are, are failing, in some sense, um, and crypto is not doing so well. But at the same time, what's also happening is that Instagram is getting into the NFT space. Um, a lot of companies are raising millions of dollars to create projects in the space. Disney is coming in the metaverse, and if you've also seen recently, we have Lego and Epic Games also um, making metaverses for kids. And the way we approach it is we're not so concerned about all these small-term shifts in the market or the industry. For us, we're really interested in what is the long-term, like what's going to happen in the space, um, how's it going to change. And there's always the pros and cons, there's always good and bad. Um, you know, like we can send rockets to the moon or beyond, but we can also use those to kill people. So technology always comes with pluses and minuses. Um, we have like plastic and incredible materials been invented, but also you know polluting the world with it, and it never destroys itself, and it never decays, and you're going to leave it in the environment forever. But essentially, the, the material itself is incredible. I mean, it holds liquid, it holds gases, it's strong, it's durable. We have like sensors all around our houses, um, amazing technology to keep track of things, um, keep track of like bad gases or intruders in your house. At the same time, they're all spying on you and they are trying to like divert your life. So, there's always like a pro and con. Um, sustainable cars, green cars, green energy, autonomous driving also brings people like this to the forefront. Um, again, like pros and cons. But for us, we think they'll always be creators and they'll be creating always. So for us, it's technology that's interesting. It's the, the, the foundation of it is interesting. And where it's going to go is going to be defined by people like us in this room. And so I want to invite Victor to speak about the, the Web3 metaverse. He's vanished. <laughs> is that Victor? <laughs> <laughs> no, that wasn't part of my presentation. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Victor. I think he makes the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brenda, do you want to add any words while he's uh, exploring? <laughs> hey, Victor. Welcome. It's my turn? Yes, it's your turn. And your mic is on. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hello? Oh my goodness. We're starting off. Like it's rough. No, that's not mine. There we are. Where are we now? Jesus caught me off guard. <clears throat> All right. What will the future of art look like? Well, that's a great question. Because right now we're seeing a lot of innovation on all the fronts. Hit it! <laughs> Since the dawn of man, technology, science, and art have had a 
Same objective. Can you guess what? No? Curiosity. Hit it. Why does these three professions go so well together? Damn, I just revealed that. Because they're all in the pursuit of curiosity. Say you're a scientist, right? You want to discover, you want to discover what happens when you cut out a cell. But before you do, you're, you're like, I don't know about that. It's not a good idea to do. But you do it because of curiosity. You go out there, you venture in to the unknown to cut up these cells. You find out, oh wow, it's dividing, it's, uh, it's multiplying, it's doing all sorts of things. Some of them are dying also. Well, that's interesting. But now, let's say you're an artist. Let's say that you are an artist that thinks without the, without the box. There is no box of thinking. And now there's only a piss canvas. You're thinking, okay, I want to paint with piss. How the fuck do you do that? So you start doing it, you know? And you do it in your living room. You soon found out, like, that's going to smell. It smells of the whole place. It smells a lot, actually. But you also find out that, all right, if I'm hydrated, there's no color in it. It's just a little bit of color, not a lot of color. But then you find out, okay, if I dehydrate myself while pissing on this canvas, I can actually add some layers in the form of gradient. And now you have something that you can work, work with, at least in some sense. You know, <laughs> piss is not a very good, it's not a very good uh, paint. Um, but now you have discovered something. You've discovered that. Maybe you shouldn't paint with piss. And you've also discovered that, hey, it's brown now that I'm dehydrated. It's not good. Um, hit it. <laughs> so how does it work? Science is the discovery. Hey, we found something. We don't know what it is, or what it does, or who it's for. Art is the playground, you know? The thing you guys found is awesome. Check out what we made with it, and who can use it, and how we use it to communicate an idea. And then technology comes in. It's like the, it's implementation. You know, the artists and the scientists, they have played around with this for some time now. Now implementation happens. And then we see it come into phones and code and product and community. So that is, that is the implementation and adoption of that scientific discovery. Wow, cool, you may say. <laughs> and we've been doing this for a long time. For example, uh, the Tyrian, I don't know how to say this or pronounce it right, Tyrian Tureha Purple. Uh, um, it was invented back in 1570 BCE, you know, and they were invented by just crushing some of these snail, snails. <coughs> they had some sort of attack mechanism in them that, that excretes this blue dye uh, in self defense, and they found out, like, hey, if you just <laughs> do that, you know, then you have all of a sudden something that can be colored into the fabric of clothes. Then what happened is they, all the kings and the rulers were like, fuck this, the fucking, uh, the people shouldn't have it. We, we have it, now we have it, now it's for us. So they banned it, no one can use it, only, only royals and things. Um, this is not a royal, he's just a phony, not a real emperor, not a real Phoenician, Tyrant, and purple. No. Move on. <laughs> We also see this with the printing press, you know? Beforehand, you have to write everything out by letter, letter by letter. It was time consuming. Nothing happened in that period. It was very like, if you wanted to get blasphemy out there, it would take hard fucking dedication. Like, uh, Jesus, more, more, I can't. 20,000 letters. You know? So, now with the printing press, we have books. And now we also have the invention of sliced bread. Beforehand, all meals needed to be ingested with cutlery, but now it's optional. You can imagine eating a burger with a knife and a fork. <laughs> Next, this is me making this presentation. How am I doing? Next, now I want you to show. I want. I want to show you a video, uh, and it's. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to shut up, and now you can see it. There we go. DJ, play that shit. Have you ever seen a polar bear playing bass? Or 
robot painted like a Picasso? Didn't think so. Dolly 2 is a new AI system from OpenAI that can take simple text descriptions like a koala dunking a basketball and turn them into photorealistic images that have never existed before. Dolly 2 can also realistically edit and retouch photos. Based on a simple natural language description, it can fill in or replace part of an image with AI-generated imagery that blends seamlessly with the original. It's called inpainting. In January 2021, OpenAI introduced Dolly, a system that could generate images from text, like this avocado armchair. Dolly 2 takes the technology even further with higher resolution, greater comprehension, and new capabilities, like inpainting. It can even start with an image as an input and create variations with different angles and styles. Dolly was created by training a neural network on images and their text descriptions. Through deep learning, it not only understands individual objects, like koala bears and motorcycles, but learns from relationships between objects. And when you ask Dolly for an image of a koala bear riding a motorcycle, it knows how to create that or anything else with a relationship to another object or action. The Dolly research has three main outcomes. First, it can help people express themselves visually in ways they may not have been able to before. Second, an AI-generated image can tell us a lot about whether the system understands us or is just repeating what it's been taught. Third, Dolly helps humans understand how AI systems see and understand our world. This is a critical part of developing AI that's useful and safe. The technology is constantly evolving, and Dolly 2 has limitations. If it's taught with images that are incorrectly labeled, like a plane labeled car, and a user tries to generate a car, Dolly may create a plane. It's like talking to a person who learned the wrong word for something. Dolly can also be limited by gaps in its training. If you type baboon and Dolly has learned what a baboon is through images and accurate labels, it will generate a lot of great baboons. But if you type howler monkey and it hasn't learned what a howler monkey is, Dolly will give you its best idea of what it thinks it could be like a howling monkey. What's exciting about the approach used to train Dolly is that it can take what it learned from a variety of other labeled images and then apply it to a new image. Given a picture of a monkey, Dolly can infer what it would look like doing something it's never done before, like paying its taxes while wearing a funny hat. Dolly is an example of how imaginative humans and clever systems can work together to make new things, amplifying our creative potential. All right, so that is, that is a very interesting concept where deep learning has been really effective in, in actually getting things right for once. Um, I think it's like Elon Musk working on with these people on OpenAI. I don't, don't quote me on it, I'm bad with quotes. Um, but uh, let's see this, like in, <laughs> this image was made by people, God damn it. Uh, but in the future it could maybe be made with AI. Um, sorry, photo resolution. Uh, check out this video. Again? Yeah. That's a real robot. So that's 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 just to indicate how far we are with the robotics technology. Like we're 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 actually I would say we're pretty far ahead. And now artists uh, like uh, Jason Wolfson, Wolfson, I think next line. Uh, Jordan Wolfson is making this. Yeah. 
You can see here, so he's already, he's having the, um, there's no sound on this one. Uh, he's having this whole robotic installation. Fascinating. And that's cream as hell. <laughs> so this is it, man. Science, innovation, and art coming together. And uh, now we have the metaverse, or at least we have some sort of idea that is coming, right? Facebook is working on it. Um, actually, a lot of people are working on it. Uh, and and for, for me, what I'm thinking, when I'm thinking metaverse, I'm thinking, okay, this is, this is a big fucking place where we can do all the things we want to do digitally or, or you know, submerged uh, via a, uh, not AI, but uh, virtual reality or augmented reality. Uh, but right now it seems like a battleground where people, big companies, are like, we want our metaverse, you know? So it's uh, exciting to see um, what, what, what comes from it. Um, but what I think will come from it is that if we somehow get it decentralized with NFTs, with all that, then, 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 we're, having, then we're having games where we can use our currency in those games in the real world. Can you imagine that? Just going down to pay for your groceries with, <laughs> with money you made in a game. That's, that's interesting, right? That's an interesting thought. If you can, if you can provide value like that, then, then you can just be a gamer being a millionaire just by, by shooting people in a game. What if, what if we reach that level of gaming? You know, we already have ways of selling skins and in-game you know, designs to, to different kinds of demographics, right? And, 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 and marketplaces. What if we could integrate this whole world where it's like, okay, we have virtual reality, then we have augmented reality, and then we have the metaverse, and then we just have the currency of all of this fucking digital shit. Then, then you're all of a sudden, then, then you're, you would have to have some sort of a persona or some sort of skin layer or, I, I, I have trouble imagining how it would, even come about like because if, if you if this exists what what would prevent you from being in the real world if you can have anything in the metaverse anything can be obtained why would you want to obtain it in the real world right so so it, it feels like it feels like a very interesting uh, very interesting thing and I'm, I'm like already now we have like people buying land and all these decentral land I bought some of something called Earth 2 um, and and like all it seems like a whole whole physical world is somehow being mapped and, and people can buy that mapped <laughs> uh, digital land and, and whatever happens with that in metaverse, that's, that's the future will tell Let's see what we have here I don't have to, I just, okay. it's a little, I have a little <laughs> just like that. next alright, web 3 man, alright we know web 1, it was all about the, the 90s, everything got bought up by Domain brokers. All the good domains are owned by people in the 90s. You know, <laughs> if you want a good.com domain, good luck, pal. You know, uh, Web 2. That's where we are now. Things uh, we, we interact with platforms that that people hold our data to. Uh, Web 3 is where we own our data, and that data is decentralized. Um, and that would be a dream scenario. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine owning all the data that all these platforms uh, currently have about you and then that data you can willingly sell? Let's say someone is saying, okay, I want to get the data from, uh, from uh, maybe 20 year olds who live in Europe. You know, what, what are they like and how do they, uh, what, is, what are their purchase habits? Let's say that there's a bid out from a company that says, we want the data from these people. And then all these people come forth saying, yeah, uh, I'll sell you that data. It's going to cost you $100 per kilobyte or whatever. And these companies are like, fuck, we really need that fucking data so we can do these product launches. Bam, everyone who sold their data voluntarily now becomes fucking rich. Because let's say there's a company that really wants all kinds of data. It hold, all, like, we as people are data producing flesh batteries, basically. Okay? We're, we're data producing everything we fucking do in this physical world is just pure data. So if there's a way to harness that 
and sell it voluntarily. Right now, these people like Facebook and and, uh, and uh, Google and all that, they just that they, they own it. Like we don't have any form of you know ownership over it. We can say don't use it, and then what happens? Like should we download it? Like it's so much data, we can't even have it on our own computers. So it's like you know, uh, there's not a good solution. But if there's somehow that this is decentralized. On, on, a, on, a, on a decentralized blockchain where wherever it is is just yours and you can access it by phone or by, by desktop or whatever and then you have sole right over what happens to that data and you can track real time dude man that's, that's a whole new world that's a world where, where justice um, that, that's a world of justice <laughs> not injustice um, so I'm very, I'm very interested in that. I'm interested in seeing what that could be, um, because I, I've, I've thought a lot about this data. I'm fucking scared. I don't just take selfies. I don't just, uh, you know, a dick pic to me is fucking scary. That means, hey, someone out there has a, a picture of my dick. I wouldn't want that anywhere. Like I wouldn't even want uh, pictures of me in a, in a in, without a shirt on. It's not a good sight, you know. So that's. What, what happens if, well, what if you could get that back? You can own it, you can distribute it. Let's say it's your own distribution, like you could be your own porn hub or whatever. But then you own that shit. Ownership, dude, that's what it is. Let's hit the next one and see what's, what's wrong. I'm excited about this schedule. That's right, pal. Next one. <laughs> NFTs might be the future, but right now they sure seem like a scam. Who agrees with me? Hands? No hands? Oh, hey, hey, there's a few hands. Hey, all right. Because a lot of rug pulls happen. Just a lot. I can't fathom how many rug pulls happen every day. Like, it's, it's almost when I tune into this space, a new rug pull has been like, oh, that, that was a coin that was actually, like, like that, that, that whole campaign I was looking out for. Rug pulled. Hmm. Because this is what happens when NFTs, like, if you don't know 100% what you're doing and who these people are, you could be scammed by that, the lack of that information. And that's not good because actually NFTs, crypto valuta and, 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 and cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and all that is actually pretty safe. The whole blockchain, all that is pretty safe. But when people don't know just that little bit of thing like, oh, how do I look for the white paper? Who is the founders? Are they anonymous? Probably don't buy for them. You know? So it's, it's, a, it's a thing where if, if hype is, is at the forefront of your purchase decision for these NFTs, either it's good, uh, it might also be bad. You know, some influencers have, have, really, have really lost a lot of uh, credibility because they've been rock pulled. They haven't, uh, you know, pushed a coin or a, a, an NFT and then it got rock pulled. And now they look like shit, you know, and their fan base don't trust them anymore. So. Uh, so it's just, NFTs is just the perfect vessel for, for money laundering, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, because art is already a good vessel for money laundering. So if you want to launder some money, get some art and a hanger. You know, uh, maybe maybe uh, just put them in a, in a shipping container somewhere, offshore, in a, in a port. Uh, but if, if, uh, if, you're, if you're needing a lot of money fast out of your... Dirty money, you put that shit in NFTs, man. Just pump up the price. You can, you know, you can even uh, make an NFT and then have two wallets. <coughs> then you can, then you can uh, make that NFT, just sell it for three million, buy it from yourself, and now you have market uh, validity that you sold it for three million dollars. And now people are gonna think, fuck, I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip that for, for three million dollars to, to three, three million two hundred thousand dollars, and then. You sell it to that guy for three million two hundred thousand dollars, and now you made fucking two hundred thousand dollars. And that guy who just bought your NFT, he's fucked. He's fucked to death. He don't know what the fuck he has on his hands, you know. And now he's done. He he's, he he doesn't. He has something of no value. But the two had some sort of value. He, he just looked at the you know <laughs> at the previous <sighs> transactions that are fake. Um, I'm, I'm skeptical. I got to say, I'm skeptical. I, I see a lot. Like I have a lot of artist friends who are in this space, and it's it's uh, they're working hard and they're they're doing what they can with this hype, and it's it's all fun and games until you know 
me as a physical, I'm just a physical. I have my paintings, I paint in my gallery, and that is hard work. But to do it on a, on a digital thing, and then you fucking, there's gas fees? You're, I'm gonna pay to list it on your platform? Fuck no, fuck off. Um, but um, yeah, so I, I'm a little bit skeptical about it. Uh, but I follow it closely, I think. But it's, it's also a space that's just, it's moving really fucking fast. And, and if you're not devoted to it completely, it's just gonna... It's, like, I feel like I'm lagging right now, you know? But uh, let's see what... Um, so so that, is, that is what the future will look like. Remembrance of the past re-altered. Um, what the fuck is that? Mean? You know, like, how? What? I didn't even get to that point. Or did I? Maybe I did. It might be that we're, we're taking things from the past, repurposing it, and uh, now we have a... It's, it's fun. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not so... I'm supposed to look clever. I think, I think, uh, I think that's it, guys. <laughs> you know, I hope I have a... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we still have about five minutes, but we quick round of applause to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there one more? No mas. Okay. Cool, hey. If you want to find uh, more VX Madsen on uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, I also have a website. It's not full of NFTs, but it's uh, full of normal pictures. All right, bye. Oh, quick question, though. Oh, okay, great. So, we have five minutes left. Just quick right. questions on this topic. Um, you did mention excitement for technology. Mm -hmm. How the written word became printed for distribution. Yeah. Discovering new colors, new materials, all of that. What about the space is still exciting for you? Are you exploring the space? Are you doing anything within it? Well, I made my first NFT, and um, so all right. I think I think it's a, all the blockchain and and technology around that is fucking interesting, and it's definitely impacted our world, and and it's a it's a world changing technology. A lot of good is going to come from it, but I also believe that you know. It's, it's all when when things are new, just all the scammers come out. When it's more adaptive, and it's more uh, you know, uh, when it's more uh, developed, it it starts the system starts to be more functional and everything works more. It's, that's how it is. But, but I do believe like I do believe in this space. I just I, I I'm, I'm not gonna be in it as an artist. I may be there as an investor or or money launcher. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but but it's it's uh, it's interesting. All this new technology is very interesting, and it, 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 uh, it, uh, you know. But is there is there like a specific? <laughs> All right, but yeah. Any interesting projects you've seen out there? Um, I've seen someone developing uh, a friction, like it was a form of rubber that when it was stretched, it produced energy. That was fucking interesting. For me, that's, that's, and, and when I saw that, my mind just went off into it, like the stratosphere, because there's like, okay, does that mean that we can have anything be energized? Like imagine any, you, you could have shoes on, and, and the fact that your weight is pushing down on the sole of the shoe produces energy. Imagine if you just could hold that in some sort of, you know, receiver or something, right? Then all of a sudden, your clothes, your jacket, your your whole house, all this this plant. When I did this, it's just gonna produce energy. That would be an amazing technology. But that I think that also comes when you can communicate with inanimate objects. Then you will have data and feedback loops where you're just like, oh, what is this concrete? Shut up, Gendry. You know, <laughs> it might be something like that. I don't know. It, it, but, but I think like when we reach that point when it's like you can communicate with any form of thing, I think that's 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 when we reach singularity because you will have such a this is actually what I want to get into with the metaverse thing where when you can communicate with objects and when you're you're having a, a, a direct, honest uh, conversation with something that isn't alive, imagine that. Also, that is that is empathy at the core of technology. That also means you can you can you can talk with someone in the metaverse on the other side of the planet, but you will not talk with them. You will feel them. What if what if we could prevent crime that way? What if that is you know hey 
all these people are feeling this bad right now. Like empathy, a, a feedback loop of empathy. You can see all their memories. You can see all their trauma, all their past. And we could be there, caressing, holding, hugging in, in our minds. Be supportive. Hey, you are not what happened to you, sir. You're not that. And it's in the metaverse, so it's, it feels inclusive. What if we reach that point of technology? What if we can become so conscious in our thought with that? Uh, might be good for the world. All right. <laughs> hey. That's a good place to move on to the office, making NFTs. Yeah, there we go. Have a good night. <laughs> Thanks, Victor. And we have Brandy.